You're listening to The Bombad Generals. General? Oh. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Bomb Bad Generals. It is an off-cycle episode, which means we're interviewing someone, this time about a tournament. I'm here with Patrick, who goes by Jeroboam on the Discord. <laughs> no? Jer- Jeroboam. Jeroboam. Jeroboam, yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. It feels... Yeah, like one of those things I've read a lot and never actually had to ever pronounce out loud. Yeah. Welcome. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. It's going pretty well if you're me. If you're Seth, also going well, but he was not able to be with us. Mm. Um, Todd is delivering the programmed nanny droid to him today, so they're working through some uh, murderous kinks uh, that the droid has, but, uh, they should be up and running by the next episode. So no Seth, no Todd, just me and Patrick. Yeah. Good to hear Todd's, you know, helping take care of Seth over there. Yeah. He's helping with the baby. It's great. So I've got you on Patrick, not just because I like talking to you. That is part of it, but also you were at the inaugural Rocky mountain open this past weekend. And I have to keep catching myself i i want to say rocky top that's a different one that happens <laughs> yeah. in tennessee yeah. in a couple months so if we mess up we're talking about the one in colorado yeah so just oh super broadly start out how was your weekend how was the experience at rocky mountain open it was great um one of the best uh convention tournaments i've been to uh yeah, Ooh, it was, and you've been to a lot for context yeah, for people. This past year, yeah. So in the last year, I've I've gone. To, that was number seven, and about a little over a year. So. Okay, what uh, what made it stand out and makes it one of your favorite ones? It's got to be the people, the energy that they brought with them. Um, it reminded. It had the energy and excitement of LVO, but at a a smaller FLG event. So. That's pretty cool. And it wasn't even that small, right? I see on the game it uplink here, I think. It it maxed out at it 64 max people. Out. Yeah, and a hundred percent attendance. We had sixty-four players. So that's you don't see that very often. I've, I've never seen it. see a drop or yeah, two. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I there's a lot of energy on you know the the five two eighty side. I think that's the local group down yes, in the, uh, in Colorado mm-hmm. there. And they have really big locals, from what I understand. Um, large in terms of player count, not in terms of uh, like they're not all six foot eight or anything. <laughs> no. But yeah, it's good to see like sixty four. I think that's probably the only FLG event, other than you know LVO is is the big one. But of the the kind of mid sized ones that I've seen completely selling out. So that's really really cool, and. What was the vibe there? I think for me, one of the things that made it so I I didn't go, even though I want to check Denver out at some point, was the timing. It's very close to Worlds. I could see it going one of two ways. Either it's prep, people are treating it as prep for Worlds, or people are like me and saying, ah, I'm not going to go to two things in one month. So it's a bunch of people who are just there, not going to Worlds, just laid back, vibing, kind of what was, what was the feel? Yeah. Um, it felt like people were prepping for worlds, but I happen to know that not, I think the Denver area is only sending a couple folks. Um, they are just a very competitive group of players. Um, they have two or three other 40 to 50 player events they host in Denver every year. Uh, and so they, they take their Legion seriously. Um, yeah, it was a very solid scene. I felt like people were taking it pretty seriously and building lists as if they were going to show up to Worlds or the LCQ and try to get in with those lists. So, um, oh, true. Yeah, yeah. There's the and LCQ then you to know, every every event you go to does have its handful of people who are just kind of there to enjoy it and have fun and yeah, yeah. Okay, so it was definitely. It felt like. There was an anticipation there. People were were prepping, getting ready. Yeah, yeah. Or they, you know, that's just their attitude. They're they're a pretty competitive scene, and yeah. they yeah, they take their legion seriously. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they're all jerks. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> no, 
quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. Yeah. No, if I was going to start beef with the group, I don't think it would be 5 to 80 just <laughs> because they would outnumber me and uh, it wouldn't turn out well. But they 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 held their ground well, As uh, additionally, it seems. The top three at the end of the day... Well, actually, no, I'm looking at day one. But uh, they made quite a few into the top eight mm -hmm. they got three of the top four at least yeah uh, we're five two eighty guys so well done to them let's kind of transition then talk about the lists and and such that we saw performing well because sure. this was the big we had cherokee which i think was right after dark troopers came out right um, but now we've let it settle a bit there was a bit of dark troopers but from what i'm seeing the storyline that I'm seeing is still Blizzard doing very well. What did it feel like on the ground for you? Um, yeah, there still wasn't very many Dark Trooper players. Um, I think someone even posted a list of all of us and our record against Impact. Um, which is kind of interesting, but... Yeah, it seemed like the the Empire players, for the most part, stuck with Blizzard Force as um, their main go-to for the competitive guys. And, you know, some of them were taking some interesting upgrades to kind of hedge against armor, whether it was impact grenades or trying to get uh, HH-12s in there and stuff. So, um, and then you had the interesting, like, uh, double ATST Blizzard Force list that did pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah so this kind of I don't want to step on the toes of uh, our next podcast too much when we're previewing worlds but my working theory is that Dark, uh, um, Blizzard was already very good Dark Troopers came in they can actually match up okay into Blizzard mm -hmm. but because you have to list build so hard to counter Dark Troopers people are doing that making their lists worse against Blizzard yeah and then Blizzard's just going to have an easier time. So what I feel like is some slightly modified version of Blizzard is going to do very well and probably win Worlds, but it didn't win this one, actually. In the end of the day, it was Vader with two dark tro or two Death Troopers. <laughs> yeah, Gu um, Gus is... Uh, he was a calculated player that weekend. He was just making all the right moves and uh, just one of their best players there. And had, I think uh, from what I was told, he's been repping the Dark Troopers or Death Troopers for a while and showed his it's, experience with them. It's an interesting concept, right? Because the different um, changes in the CRB really made it tougher for snipers to do well, I think. Yes. Plus, snipers are pretty trash into Dark Troopers themselves and into Blizzard with the Bombard card. Yes. So yeah. not, a lot of, not a lot of snipers around. Yeah. That's what Death Troopers don't like and... You know, it was now definitely they can run free. A, a great meta call there. I I played snipers on my redemption bracket, and they did almost nothing all three games. In fact, the first two games they didn't even shoot because it was just too dangerous wow. for them to step out. They would just get shot back and yeah. lose activations, yep. lose kill points. Yep. Oh, so we heard it here first. Snipers bad. <laughs> Don't take snipers. Yeah, it's my opinion. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm in a similar boat. People be hyping them up with like uh, rule with respect, but I I think that card's overhyped. But that's another conversation. Yeah, yeah uh, that's definitely. a whole different can of worms. <laughs> so I mean, meta wise, to wrap that up, like yeah, Empire. You were Empire. Half the field it feels like was Empire. Yeah. Five at the top. Um, I played uh, Re eight. Republic all three rounds. Okay, red. The red save factions have been, yeah. you know, one and two. It feels like for about a year, as far as play, mm -hmm. players playing it. Yeah. Now, obviously, there's you know the the recap lists, the top eight, all of that stuff. At the event, was there something that you kind of that caught your eye, or that was maybe flying under the radar a bit of something where you're like, ooh, that's a, that's spicy, that's interesting. I was shocked at my round one opponents list. Uh, a guy named Justice out of Nebraska, he was playing a seven activation Anakin Obi-Wan list with a couple medics in there. And man, it could absorb damage so well. Mm -hmm. um, and then an ATRT, sneakily good against Dark Troopers. You know, like mm. uh, Impact mm -hmm. One, Crit One, or whatever on its main gun. Um, 
Yeah, they don't one shot it like they do, you know, an equivalent trooper unit yeah. with white saves. Yeah, so okay. yeah, I you know, I came in and we were playing that first round and I took multiple shots on Anakin and Obi-Wan just being able to guardian multiple hits use his dodges to reduce his rolls while he's guarding have the medics there if he does miss wounds like it was he was just able to absorb enough damage in the beginning and then put some hurt back into the death trooper or dark troopers just so. stacking things up yeah. one after another sort of thing now i think for me that's one of the big differences when we're talking real life tournaments versus something like invader league and tts right you don't have time to prepare scout your lists what's your approach for you when you see something like that across the table where you know you've got a couple minutes go to your table look at their list oh man this is something i did not expect and did not prep for what kind of goes through your mind there yeah i try to calculate what what's the big oh no's to watch out for and you know there's anakin and his two pip right that's the killer you Mm -hmm. don't want to be at range two of anakin when his two pip goes off so he can't fire support saber through you Um, yeah because you had dark troopers in this particular instance especially but yeah and then obi-wan I'd very rarely played against, and I didn't have any like red flags in my mind about him. Um, but yeah, it was, feel- it was just kind of looking at his units going, okay, which ones can really hurt me? Make sure I remember their ranges, make sure, you know, remember if I can their command cards. So mm-hmm. what, what threat ranges to stay out of and who to target first and yeah. I, th- I feel like I'm, I'm guilty of similar things in, in against those kind of lists being like, oh yeah, Obi Wan, his one pip is actually like pretty dope, and now he's I remember that when he's in the middle of my army and gets seven tokens, including a standby. Obi Wan, like, oh yeah, I, I, I this might be a hot take, but I think Obi Wan is one of the best anti dark trooper Jedi. Ooh, that, th- that tell us more. Tell us more. Crit two, mm-hmm. uh, impact two, pierce mm-hmm. two. So right away he converts at least generally four dice to hits and most jedi are only impact three or less so he's already getting more hits in he's got the pierce two in there um he's got the dodge token so when he dives the next round he plays his one pip and gets all those tokens right and Mm -hmm. so he can take a hit from the dark troopers because he's sitting on four or five dodge tokens and he gets a stack of aim tokens too to go with it so he can really convert all of his dice um yeah Mm, like okay i i was impressed obi-wan is what thrashed my dark troopers in that game so we heard it here first everybody take obi-wan and no snipers no snipers there you go yeah Huh. Okay, that's uh, I like that for something that that caught your eye. Yeah. Sorry that uh, it knocked you out at the start. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, glad to see that you know people are experimenting with things and um, you know doing well with it. So kind of talking about the event more generally sure. again. Hopefully, you know from what I heard talking to people at LVO, there are plans for potentially a, a different venue next year and it. Uh, maybe even scaling it, scaling it up, having it at a bit better time. If you saw one or two things carried forward from Rocky Mountain open this year to next year, what would those things be? And then if you could take something from Rocky Mountain open and take it to every tournament, what would that be? Ooh, man. I come with the hard hitting questions here. All right. Um, We'll touch on the, the the size and stuff you were mentioning earlier. Yeah, so talking mm-hmm. with uh, Space Viking or Steven, he's definitely planning on um, getting a, a higher player count. Uh, it will, I think they've already signed on for the same venue yet, next year, but okay. Legion will be in its own area next year and should be able to support uh, the like 128 player count. So that is their goal for next year. Of course, all this could change, you know, everything Mm -hmm. changes, but that's, that's the hope in the, is to make it bigger. And I do know they are trying to change the time because spring break is rough, um, especially smushed in between LVO, then 
uh, Cherokee and then Rocky Mountain the Depticon. to Depticon yeah. is just a lot of stuff in a very short time period. And so, and for flying in there, you know, Denver is one of the cheapest airports to get to because it's a major hub for everyone. Uh, but March is awful because it's spring break and everyone's trying to get into Denver there. So, and go skiing. So, yeah. So, okay. hopefully, FLG takes uh, some feedback and maybe finds a better time for the event, but will for sure be a, a larger event next year. So, that's yeah, awesome to hear because as I say, I want to check it out and. If it's 120, 28 players, that's going to feel like one of the biggest events, you know, in North America. Yeah. You know, we've both been to a lot of stuff. Like, the only things bigger than that are LVO and Adepticon. Yeah. Right? So, your your average FLG one, they're not, they're not going above usually, like, somewhere in the 50s, 40s, 50s. So, it's it, I'm, I'm keeping that on my radar, and I guess people... I, I would encourage others to do the same yeah. because that's going to be a really cool event. And if we can have more of those on the calendar, you know, right now it's, you know, there's a few big ones that everyone talks about, but if we could have more of those, that's just great for the game. For sure. And then as far as like what I would bring back next year to Rocky Mountain, the redemption bracket, um, I think over half, maybe even close to like two thirds of the players rolled a random list using mm -hmm. uh, a list generator and it was just wild fun on on that second day so um it was really fun <laughs> all of us taking it so serious with those silly uh random lists we rolled and um yeah that's something i really like for that event i don't think that's something i'd like to see at like every event uh, mm -hmm. but i think it's something really special they do and it, it you know I have a couple questions yeah, on that. Yeah, definitely. This is very. Shoot. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. Oh, okay. one. Yeah. Was it mostly locals who were rolling? I, I'm just thinking. No, no. If you're traveling to it, did people know ahead of time? Yes. Hey, this is what we're gonna do. Okay, yeah. so, that's good. You gotta let people know so that they can bring miniatures. Yeah, I rolled random. Bushman uh, rolled random. I think. Yeah, almost everyone. I hung out with we all world ran them over the weekend and so yeah we just did it you know a week ahead of time so i'd never even practiced my list or anything it was okay. just like so rolled it a week ahead of time pack the minis for that extra list <laughs> yep take that yep. makes sense makes sense yeah. okay second question because we were talking before we started recording about you know you may be hitting up nova because you're getting six rounds they're doing i guess six rounds swiss it sure. sounds like how do you feel about more games of Swiss versus a cut and the remaining players go into a, a reset redemption bracket? Right. So um, while I had a lot of fun doing the random roll redemption bracket, if it wasn't, if it didn't have that kind of spin on it, I would have much preferred just a straight Swiss. Um, mm -hmm. I... I believe in the Swiss bracket, I, you know, like every round of Swiss, you should pair closer to closer to someone of your equal skill level. And so your game should become more interesting and fun because of that. Um, and then That's I'm point. just, I yeah. am a leaning on, I'm more of a competitive player. So especially when I'm traveling, I don't like paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars to go to an event and then just have games of Legion that don't improve my play um so mm -hmm. i'm excited about that so nova's doing six rounds of swiss and a cut after that for top eight so oh. Oh. It's, it's three days of legion yeah um okay me you might be talking me more into nova now yeah, this is yeah. exciting so yeah. that's also i think you know what's uh Steven was talking about for Rocky Mountain next year is if they if they're gonna do 128 player they're gonna have to do a three day event so mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah um, I yeah so I am definitely in the boat of just straight Swiss um, I would say even six yeah. rounds unless there's an invite on the line like who cares if you have two like five and one players like. I, I don't know. I know. Yeah. I know some people like to see the first place or whatever, but um, I think if there's not something like a world's invite on the line, just play six rounds of Legion, right? As long as you 
prize accordingly. Right. I think yep. that's the I thing. I agree right? too. Do X and whatever. Yeah. You know, you got to set yeah. up your prize accordingly. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I run into that problem locally all the time. Like, we can't do enough rounds for how many people oh, yeah. and how long the day is. So, tiebreakers suck. People like to argue MOV versus SOS, but everyone can agree that tiebreakers just suck. Agreed. So, yeah. you know, X and O's just award all X and O's the same. Award all X and ones the same for sure. Yeah. I like your thoughts there about the Swiss and getting better matchups. Because at first I was like, well, you know. At the events I've gone to, it's six games is six games at least, if you do the redemption bracket um, for those three extra, but yeah, it's not quite the same. Because you reset, you're not playing the, the players of yeah. similar skills, and it's not as enjoyable. It's still good, but probably, you know, if you've got more experienced players just steamrolling less experienced players neither person is having a yeah. great time there versus and that has happened for me at multiple day twos where my first round paired against a newer guy and it's like well this is <laughs> i'm sorry i wish we would have kept our records because <laughs> yeah um, it would have been better for, it, it, for all both, parties yeah and, like i've I, it, it's not fun like i you know it's it's i i have also gone to an event like this and you know lost first round day one and just known like hey i'm out of it i can't make the cut yeah right so i think too it's more options for redemption pun intended of <laughs> like hey if we keep the same swiss i can work my way back up to five and one and you know feel yeah. really good about the weekend where hey yeah, I lost round one and submarined it a bit, but I was playing really good players at the end with great records and coming out on top. Yeah. Right. And, so. And even if I did have an invite, I would probably cut the top eight out and leave everyone else playing Swiss. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Just like continue it, continue it on. Yeah. That, that, that's an, a good transition point because another thing we were talking about is you're kind of helping with some, some TOing in the future. Um, maybe that grows more as, as the years go on, who knows, but how are your experiences as a player now going to a whole bunch of different events? How is that shaping how you're going to TO your own event? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It's definitely given me some bias. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I found what I like, so that's, you know, how I'm going to try to structure my events and stuff like that. So like I said, you know, I am trying, I'm co TOing Lone Star with Zane, Hot and Frosty. He'll actually be at the event. I unfortunately won't be able to make it. Um, Boo. Yeah, I know. I'm really bummed about that. But next year, next year. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, things like playing six rounds of Swiss, I'm heavily pushing for, but he's got the final say. So, um, and then. Let's see what other things. Oh man, there's stuff like this is gonna upset some people. I, Ooh, I, bring it. That's what I want. Oh to hear. yeah, this, this is, is juicy. Good stuff. I I would not allow clear bases at my events. Ooh, okay. That yeah. is a personal bias. I just I've I've never I've just felt so off playing against armies with clear bases i don't know what it is just something about it threw it through the games mm -hmm. off for me so but luckily i'm not in charge of anything so <laughs> so you you would say you would use your power to uh get revenge on all those that have wronged you oh, yeah. basically is how you're approaching the to classic okay, empire okay. move right you know yeah i'm an, I'm an empire player you know you live the uh, gimmick yeah i can respect that no i'm um yeah, but I'd probably be more friendly about other proxy things. I don't know. It all yeah. depends, you know. That's ah. the good thing about being kind of unofficial events with these FLG things, right? right. You can be a little more uh, lenient on the proxy side. How about terrain? You know, obviously we had the terrain sure. feedback at LVO. They're using similar terrain. Well, maybe not at uh, Rocky Mountain if it's maybe it's already on its way to Chicago, but I assume for... Um, Lone Star, you'll have access to all that LV, uh, FLG terrain. You know, mm -hmm. what are you doing there as far as learning from the previous events and kind of putting your spin on it? I would, um, I would probably encourage them to reduce terrain 
Yeah. Yeah. I, from I, from just playing um, more with the new rules. I I liked uh, a lot of the tables at LVO. It still felt a bit too much. I would I would like the opportunity for out of cover shots. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just really hard to balance making a table look nice though. And Maybe it's a mindset we need to have as players is calling more scatter terrain as no cover or something like that. And just saying, hey, it looks nice on the table. Um, but if we call this stuff covered, then they literally mm -hmm. never be an open shot on this table. And yeah, it's tough because um, there's always going to be one player who's it's like, no, I want that to be cover. I want, you know, you're playing Dark Troopers yeah. and Boba. Hey, I, I've got blast. My guys can't get cover anyways. Yeah. Uh, Nothing should give, or nothing gives cover, right? And it's it, like, oh, well, you know. Yeah, that's, that's like my counterbalance to not being mm -hmm. able to tactically remove cover from people anymore, or it's significantly yeah. harder, so. Um, that gets into a whole nother discussion yeah, about, yeah. you know, cover, and to an extent, that's, that's the problem with Dark Troopers, is these are problems that you have to solve more now in list building, rather than on the table, and that feels worse. Yeah. Feels worse to me. Because you want to be able to walk up to the table, see the, see the opponent, see the table, react to that, but if your list is already built, then it's like, well, is what it is. Right. Right. Mm. Yeah, cool, so, cool. I think, I, I would love to oh, see some some more varied height terrain um mm -hmm. it, the power of a trooper unit being able to climb on top of anything less than height one is significant so it'd be nice to get yeah. a little more terrain in there that prevents that from happening um, height to make me you know give give those people with jump to you and yeah uh, expert climber you know a, a nice little advantage stall out some things like bikes with all the speeder one that's going around like at least it, yeah, make it more interesting. It's hard. It's hard to find height two stuff, but it, it adds a lot. Yeah. yeah. One thing I really liked from LVO that I would like to see, you know, maybe if you guys incorporate this into uh, Lone Star or not, certainly if if and when I, I run a bigger event here, something I want to do is those, the train feedback forms I think are great. Even if it's a local, you know, and you're using just local tables, I think it's really good to get the feedback. Hey, did you enjoy playing on this table? How did it feel? Because you can especially kind of get inside your own ecosystems of like, oh yeah, this tape, this is this is how a table should be, or whatever. Um, and it's good to get those outside perspectives and then adjust and, and build on that. So that would be yeah. uh, my bit of advice as far as just like yeah, open open things up for the player feedback because tables tables are why we got into Legion at least for me par partially right like right it's. It's part of the allure of the game. Yeah, and it, they it, are awesome. But it really we, helps set the scene and make you, you know, feel like you're in Star Wars, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it sucks when you travel all this way and you're like, oh man, these tables uh, are crap. <laughs> Not calling yeah. anything out specifically, but it happens. It happens at every yeah. event, honestly. Sure. There's every event. There's a c couple tables where you're like, ooh. I don't want to get paired. I don't want to get on that table. Yeah. Uh, that's not going to go well for me. Yeah. Oh, I got to call out one table from Rocky Mountain for a good thing. I never got to Ooh. play on it, but one of their locals has this beautiful uh, Nar Shadab. Nar Shadab? I don't know. Is that how you say it? Um, like the Hutties planet or whatever. Beautiful, beautiful table. It has like a cantina oh. band that you press a button and it starts lighting up and playing, and like all these LED advertisements and signs. Like it's just, it's amazing. Uh, they had they had a a few local tables there, and they were all gorgeous tables. So they've got a good. Oh wow! Okay, more more good things to say. Yeah. Anything else before we wrap up that you want to say about uh, Rocky Mountain? Would you recommend it to people? Yeah, it's on my uh, every year list. I think at this point, um, the can't get much better praise than that. Yeah, it's it's the people, man. Like I, the camaraderie and the the hospitality of everyone there, like. 
I only had to get maybe two Ubers the whole weekend because people were more than happy to drive me around, drive me to the airport, back to my hotel, to dinner. I even know a bunch of the locals uh, who had extra rooms, put up guys flying in and stuff like that. Like just um, next level hospitality. Everyone was so polite. Awesome. And then the energy, everyone was so excited and just ready and competitive, but just fun too. Like there wasn't anybody getting upset with each other and yeah so just a really great community up there so i would highly recommend it to anybody well there you have it everyone go raid uh rocky mountain open next year and make sure that less 5 to 80 guys are at the top of the bracket at the end of it yeah okay that's that's the challenge Definitely. anything you want to plug patrick Ooh, come check out Lone Star Open July, I think, 22nd, 23rd. Zane's going to put on a great tournament. And um, yeah. So. You'll do it from the shadows. Yeah. He's the Darth Vader, you're Darth Sidious. Yeah, it's something like that. <laughs> Pulling the strings. I think in our server, I have him as uh, the Emperor and I'm the Grand Vizier. So okay, I'm, uh, I'm just I'm it. just his tool, and he's he's got all the power. So that's what I say about you all the time as well, <laughs> Patrick. That guy, he's a tool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. Yeah, and thanks for having me. Hopefully, I will see you at Lone Star Open. Yeah. All right, everyone. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning in, and remember to stay Gungan. This has been. The Bomb Bad Generals. Listening to Bomb Bad Generals is not scientifically proven to make you a better Legion player. Side effects may include bad dice rolls, misfigures, game losses, bankruptcy, divorce, vomiting, and sudden death. Ask your doctor if Bomb Bad Generals is right for you.